recording. Hey guys, what's up? This is Jen, and today I have a very special guest, Brooklyn. Thank you so much for being here today. Hey, Brooklyn. Happy to be here. Yay! I'm going to be interviewing her. I'm going to see what does she do. I We met at a mix and mingle here in Sacramento. It's uh, Trevor Fong's mix and mingle. He is an insurance agent and he throws amazing networking parties. We went to this event where it was down at the river. It was a beautiful <laughs> day. COVID kind of just lifted and everybody was hungry, hungry to network and create wonderful lasting relationships. So hi, Brooklyn. Hello, Jen. Yeah, that event was amazing. I made so many like connections. Yours was obviously the best one, but uh, I got a stack of business cards and I'm excited for the next one for sure. Okay. So if you want to meet us and talk to us and create a relationship with us and do business deals with us, I'm a real estate agent. She's a mortgage loan officer. If you are looking to buy a house, we're the power team here. We're yes. here to do business. We have fun. We have good energy. Brooklyn loves <laughs> plants. I'm all about teamwork because <laughs> if you want to buy a house, it takes a really good team. And there's a lot of people that have great energy and we're it. We're it right here. Yes. Right? We will include our social media in the bio below. Yes, we will. Okay. So number one, how do I even apply for a mortgage? That's a great question to start with. Um, the application process is actually quite simple. Um, okay. We offer an easy to maneuver online application through our company website, okay. as well as the option of applying over the phone or directly with us in a sit down meeting. Wow. Um, yeah, so we have different options for you. If you know your computer challenged or something, we can definitely just you know do it for you. All you have to do is meet up with us or, or anything that you might need. Um, as far as the content goes, the application covers income, assets, liabilities, credit, you know, the basics, um, any real estate that you might currently own if you're currently a homeowner, um, and then the loans that you currently have, which might be associated with the house that you're currently occupying, um, and then simple list of yes or no declaration questions. This is just in regards to like judgments, bankruptcies, foreclosures, things of that nature. Um, and then there's a section on military service. We do have some really good programs for veterans. Um, awesome. So you definitely want to fill that out if that applies. Mm -hmm. um, and a mandatory demographic section in compliance with anti-discriminatory laws. Perfect. Scary. <clears throat> I just have a little coffee. Okay. Yeah. So awesome. Yeah, because I have clients that it's their first time buying a home, the application process can be a little bit intimidating. So I like mortgage loan officers that say, hey, uh, you could come down to my office. I will hold your hand and make sure that we get this application process and answer all your questions. Like those are the mortgage loan officers that I want to work with because my clients, it's, it's, I, I just want, you just tell me how much we can spend and I go by the house. I have the fun part. Most definitely. And, you know, also with the application, it's totally free. You know, we do the credit report right. and everything. Mm -hmm. And this doesn't necessarily have to be after you've picked out a home. This is um, also for the pre-approval uh, process as well. So we can get your application in. We can pre-approve you for a certain set amount. And then you can just go shopping, feeling comfortable knowing that it's within your price range. Exactly. And after we get the pre-approval and we start putting offers on houses, I always tell people, I want you to sleep well at night. You not only have to love this house, you have to love the monthly payment. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. That's right? so true, Jen. And it, I need something that they feel comfortable with. You know, what yes. do you feel comfortable with putting an offer on? And what do you feel comfortable with with monthly payments? Because when I get you in the house, I want you to stay in the house. Yes. It's and not, there might not just be one um, option that fits. There might be multiple. And so it really depends on what your financial goals are. Mm -hmm. um, if you need more funds for right now, because you're going to want to like renovate the home once you get in, mm -hmm. or um, if afterwards you're going to need to like buy a car or something, if you need those extra funds now, then maybe we'll put a smaller down payment mm -hmm. down and we'll, we'll work with the type of loan that you need um, nice. be, yeah, so there's options. 
Awesome. Yeah. And it's all about <clears throat> the client feeling comfortable. Of That's course. my number one priority. If you don't yes. feel comfortable, don't do it. What documents do I need specifically for a mortgage? Okay, so for a typical borrower, uh -huh. in order for a home loan to be submitted for approval, we would okay. start with your most recent 30-day pay stub, okay. um, your most recent two months bank statements, okay. um, federal tax returns over the okay. last two years. This would include your W-2s um, or your 1099s. Of course, okay. a copy of a valid license. That helps. Um, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> and then um, if applicable, we would also need any divorce decrees, bankruptcy papers, or uh, that DD-214 if you're a veteran. Um, additional documentation in the case of a refinance would be the contact info of the homeowner's insurance agent and a copy of your last mortgage statement. But uh, this list will, of course, vary from situation to situation. Awesome. Yeah. So pretty much I just have to show you how much money I make. So that way yep. we can borrow against it to buy the house. Exactly. Is that, exactly. That's what a mortgage is, really. You're borrowing against your salary. And so you mm -hmm. have to show them how much you're, you have to prove and show them how much money you make. And then we can get a loan based on that. It's just to make sure that we know you can afford it. <laughs> so yeah. It's, yeah. It's just to, to verify everything. Yeah. We need to make sure you can afford it is the best sentence right there because <laughs> if you can't afford it why would we put you in that house you know right I, we wouldn't want to put you in that situation we're trying mm -hmm. to help you not hurt you it's a hundred percent help here and you know this is going to be your forever home or an investment property you know this is part of your portfolio and this is going to stay with you for a long time this is a major major investment so it's, it's true. It's, it's true. a really big decision. And um, my goal is to create like 30 year planners for my mortgage loan officers, because when you buy a house, you should really have a 30 year planner and be writing out all of your payments and everything and how you want to pay off that loan. How maybe you want to refinance it and do something else too. Like it should be a monthly check in with that number. Yes, and most loans are going to be 30-year um, terms. Some are going to be 15, and in very rare cases, that number will vary, but for the most part, it will be 30 or 15. Um, I do understand that not all homeowners are going to stay in that one house for the full 30-year length, but you should plan for it um, on the off chance that you do. So. Yeah, most people do stay in their home <clears throat> for 30 years, but not everybody does. I mean, the longer you stay in your home, the better deal. The it better is. you are in a position financially. Yeah, that's yeah. true. Uh, the the, you have. The neighborhood that I live in right now, um, there's this old woman. She's about 83. She's like, I bought my house in 1969. And she's just <laughs> lived in that house. And I'm like, damn, that is a good deal. Because like, like she's like, I bought my house for like $18,000. I was like, $18,000. Oh my gosh, I just came across one the other day, which was a super similar situation. And I'm uh -huh. like, oh my gosh, you know how valuable that house is now? That's like a 600K house. You like bought it for like $17,000. $300,000 like, right now. Like, oh like, good job, you know, because you paid it off and yeah. you lived in it. And like, homes are supposed to be lived in. And <laughs> That's and then what they're built the, for. That's what they're built for, right? <laughs> and then across the street, she's like, they bought that for $5,000. I was like, $5,000? Oh, my God. <laughs> and, like, so then, then they pass it down to their kids, right? So, like, their kids don't have a mortgage and stuff. And it's like, this is generational wealth. Yes, yes. Passing mm -hmm. down homes to your kids so that way they don't have to buy a house, you know, 30 years later when prices totally change is a great way to set up your family for success. And we, when you buy a house, you should really be thinking about that long-term thing and how you're going to set up your kids. You should have really have a 200 plan, 200 year plan for your house because it's going to be your great grandkids, <laughs> your great kids. And especially in Sacramento, because like I walk into houses that are hundred years old and I'm like, man, if this stayed in one family for a hundred years, like I mean, that, wow. that might be a little daunting for a first time home buyer. I know. I understand. just, I'm crazy. I mean, I'm crazy. Okay. <laughs> okay. Bring me back, Brooklyn. Bring me back. That may be daunting for a first time home buyer. <laughs> yes. That, that would 
crazy, but I'm just planting some seeds out there. Anyways, Brooklyn, what areas do you cover? So I'm personally licensed in the whole state of California. Um, I plan on, thank you. Yes. Sally. I plan on expanding my license um, to the neighboring states within um, the coming year, hopefully. Um, but my company, however, has licenses and branches covering across the whole country. Um, the oh, main cool. headquarters is up in Eugene. Um, it, we're well known there and we've been expanding for, for a bit of time now. Um, my branch is on the newer side, but yeah, we have branches just all across the country. So like if I wanted to buy a house in Nevada, <clears throat> but like I love you as my mortgage loan officer, can you refer me out to another mortgage loan officer or how does that work? Of course, of course. I, I'm completely comfortable doing that. If I'm not able to get you the right loan program in the right state for you, I have no issues uh, referring you out, of cool. course. Cool, yeah. and I'm sure you know so many people in the industry and you can recommend a really amazing person, right? I know enough. <laughs> yeah, you, and you're meeting more, yeah. <laughs> Um, what can I expect in the mortgage process? So our company prides itself in exceptional communication as well as service. We like to keep things as simple and pain-free for you as possible. So we do all of the heavy lifting for you. You can expect transparency and timeliness with us. Yes. Well, okay. I'm just going to say for this Zoom, I have experienced that before we even started this interview. <laughs> Thank uh, you. Yeah. So what did you say? You can expect a pain free as possible. Brooklyn called me. She reached out to me. She told me exactly what, how this was going to go down. <laughs> that boundary. She told her neighbor in her office right now, like I'm going on a Zoom. It needs to be quiet. Like just totally felt comfortable and in control and I knew what to expect with this interview and I know that's how you run your business thank you because yes how you do one thing is how you do everything and just interacting with people and before you even fill out an application or buy a house or anything you can read them by how they handle their business and Brooklyn on it like so on it your communication is amazing awesome like 10 out of 10 already like before you, we Jen. even started this <laughs> interview I already knew like mm -hmm. oh yeah mm -hmm. I got this time. handled yes he's got <laughs> it handled and making sure just making sure like your communication 10 out of 10 because in this industry communication is so key like I'm an over communicator especially when we're in a deal especially when we have 500 thousand dollars a million dollars on the line yes you better believe I want someone communicating with me I want to know what's happening I want everyone to know what's happening and I want everyone to feel comfortable and to sleep at night and I, I also I communicate with the clients in the way that they want and the frequency that Boom. they want so Boom. it's important to ask them like do you want me notifying you daily on our progress or would you rather just let you know have me let you know after it's done um, do you want me bugging you or do you not want me bugging you? Do you prefer call, text, email? Really? Get all of that done at the beginning so that way I can know their preferred method of communication during the process. And that makes it so much more enjoyable because some people like emails and some people like texts and some people like phone calls. And if you're a text person <clears throat> and you're getting a phone call, it's annoying. And you have to know what your client's communication style is to make it a nice transaction and stress-free, right? Yes, right. So yeah, again, 10 out of 10, Brooke, I highly recommend this mortgage loan officer because <laughs> it's been nothing but a great experience for me so far. And Thank if you. you're ready for a mortgage, this, this is who I recommend for sure. How is the housing market right now? <laughs> well, Excuse as me. you know, um, there are a lot of world <laughs> events happening right now that are directly affecting our economy. <laughs> um, the housing market is strong but it's definitely a seller's market right now. I've noticed that um, for the buyers, it's a lot more difficult um, because I mean, there's just so many buyers out there right now and the sellers are just putting their houses up and it's getting, it's getting eaten up really quick. Snatched. You know, um, people are buying over asking price. Um, uh -huh. So it's, 
I, I understand like the difficulty for a buyer's position at the moment. Um, so we're just, we're just doing our best to help them out. And in this market, I just did a deal where I helped my client sell his condo and we had to get into another house. This is the craziest market in the history of real estate. Like the demand is so high, the supply is practically nothing. The competition is fierce. You want to talk yes. about a shark tank right now? Let's go. Like, <laughs> you got to be ready. And so for my client, I do have the 50-year planner. And I said, I want you to write in your 50-year planner. We're going to sell your condo and we're going to get in contract in the same month. Like, yeah. it's not going to be months and months and months of searching. Like, I'm going to get your frequency and energy right. And we looked at one place and we got outbid and like it needed a new roof. And I was like, you shouldn't buy this place. Like this all patched up and you know, all this. And I was like telling him like there, this place needs work. This is going to be more expensive than the purchase price. And um, it's hard to buy a house that the roof can't certify, you know, like that makes me nervous. I can't sleep at night if my client, you know, has a leaky roof and we got outbid. And then the next place we went and, you know, I just called you as my, my job is I have to create relationships with the listing agent, because if I can create a relationship and say, Hey, I will work with you. And the listing agent for the deal that we got um, in contract with just came back from COVID. He got COVID and his like lungs collapsed and he's like, I'm fatigued. And I said, Hey, oh my gosh, you accept a deal with me. I will carry this whole deal on my back. And I will make sure this is the smoothest transaction. Here's our price. Good. Here's what we can do. And you want to accept my offer because I'm going to make sure everyone's happy in this transaction. And guess what? We, we got our offer accepted. And, awesome. and we searched for about a week. We looked at maybe 20 homes and boom, 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 boom. But it's a mindset. It's a mindset. So how is the housing market right now? The market changes all the time. Like you said, world events happen. Um, some, it, most of the time it is going to be a seller's market. Very rarely is it a buyer's market. It's true. It hasn't been in quite some time. And I want to reiterate, that's why it's so important. So, so, so important. I cannot stress this enough to get pre-approved. If right. you're not pre-approved, the seller is not even going to consider you. And that's just facts. You don't even you know? exist if you don't if you're not pre-approved. Like. Unfortunately, it's true because if you're pre-approved, they know that you can actually buy the house. They right. know that you can afford it. They have no um, wondering about like whether you're actually going to be able to get a loan, how long it's going to take for, you know, the contract to be completed. They're, they're reassured, you know? Right. Yeah. You can't even submit an offer without a pre-approval unless you're all cash. Yeah. And you, uh, if you're all cash, you just have to submit your proof of funds or like a bank statement and say, Hey, exactly. here's the cash. Here's my offer. And if you don't have the cash, you're going to have to get a loan. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. That's just how it is. So how is the housing market right now? It's crazy, but we're still doing <laughs> deals crazy. over here. We're still doing deals and it's about mindset and it's about intention and it's about allowing yourself to have a amazing process and getting the house of your right? Right. So what are the rates currently? Well, um, in response to the highest inflation in the last 40 years since Damn. 1982, actually. Um, yeah, the Fed is planning for rate hikes this year to counter. Uh -huh. um, we're currently in the mid fours, but mid fours? it is roughly in the 4. mid fours. 5? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yay. Okay. Um, but let hear me out. Your okay. rate will depend. It will depend on the type of program that you end up going with. And of course, it's based off your credit history. Um, so we cannot give you a specific rate on mm -hmm. unless it's for you in particular. So it's right. gonna vary from person to person, but it is generally right now in the mid-fours. Um, and we anticipate rates to steadily climb in the coming years. To what? Steadily climb. Yeah, they're gonna Five, they're gonna keep six. going up. <laughs> do we do we have um, a number? 
We don't have a specific number. No, this is in the future and I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't give you a specific oh, number. Well, you can look but, uh, at the Federal Reserve and they'll like we can tell forecast. you. Yeah. We can definitely and forecast. So you if you if people <clears throat> want to get really nerdy on this, you can watch the Federal Reserve and they'll still tell you like okay, interest rates are going to go up and blah 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 and so you can kind of see where we're going and it's also based on the unemployment rate in the country as well. Yes, so of course. That's what rates are determined by. If you want to nerd out and you're not ready to get a mortgage, but you want to watch and you want to, you know, if you're a data person, watch what the feds are doing and they'll tell you because they're mm -hmm. controlling the money, right? Yes. They're saying, yes. okay, we'll give you money at this price. And the rates were super low during COVID because they wanted people to refinance. And they wanted people to kind of like stay in their homes. And mm -hmm. then as the market kind of like got crazier, they're like, okay, like we'll slow it down. And like when the rates go up, they're trying to slow it down, right? And, and everyone's like, well, when's like the best time to buy a house? It's number one, when you're ready. If you're trying to, to gauge the market on where rates are gonna be, look, here it is. Rates are super low, and, but the prices of houses are high. Rates are super high, the prices of houses will go lower somehow you're going to pay. It's either you're going to pay with the purchase price or you're going to pay with the APR. It's true. Right? It's true. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't mean to scare anyone, but like the sooner you can be ready to buy a house, the better because yeah, it, prices are just going to forecasted to increase. And we're I cannot say for to sure, have but a it's... really good year in 2022. Like everyone's like, when's the crash? What? We, what? When is the crash? Because we've been waiting for a crash. Everyone thought there was going to be a crash two years ago, three years ago. Housing market strong. I don't. I don't know if we're going to have one. I. It, it's not predicted. And every if you're waiting for a crash, how long are you going to wait? You know. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, the people that didn't wait and bought last year could sell their house and have equity. And so. Um, so just so people know, when we say rates, that is the interest rate for mm -hmm. your loan. Just making Correct. sure for people that are first time. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. When you borrow money, you have to pay it back. And then there's like an interest rate in which you On have top to pay it, it back. And so it fluctuates with mortgages. So just want to let people know what's going on there. And but once it's locked in, it's locked in for the life of the loan. And when should people lock in their rate? Uh, people should lock in their rate. Well, it the rate is locked at the beginning of the loan um, or around the middle of the loan. It's during the loan process. And so okay. that rate is locked for the entirety of the loan, whichever, where the, whether it's 15 years or it's 30 years, um, even if the market goes up and down, your rate is set at the beginning of that loan. So like after they put in an offer, and we get our offer accepted, we're going to call, mm -hmm. me and my client are going to call you, Brooklyn, and be like, okay, we're ready to lock it in. But, or you yes. can float it, right? You, you can, can float, float it. it. Some people do. Um, sometimes it costs a little bit more to float it. Um, if you think that it's going to drop during that month process of um, finishing the contract, um, it's not common, but it does happen. Um, but yeah, you can basically lock your loan or lock your rate in at any point in time. So yeah, with process. my last client, we got his condo in contract. We got into contract with the half flex. Mm -hmm. As soon as we got in contract, got all, we have to submit the offer to you. And I, I called up my other mortgage loan officer and I was like, what's his rate at? Because I'm super over mama bear protective about my clients. And I'm like, what's their rate? What? And I have to have <laughs> really good relationships with my mortgage loan officers because I need to know that they're taking care of my client. And I think uh, a month ago, it was like at, at 3.5 and then it started like going up and I was like, what's his rate at? What's his rate at? And they're like, okay, well, if you lock today, it's going to be like 3.8 to 8.75 or something. And I was like, and it could be totally different the next day too. Yeah. Right. You know, and it's yeah, like, totally did changes. I, did I lock it? Like, where is the crystal ball? So we know where these like APRs are going because I, and I was like, I told my client, you should lock today. Like, I just, I know, like, I know rates are going up. And I was like, we're in contract, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, write in your 50 year planner, what rate you want. And then we wrote 3.875. And I was, and then uh, there's something happened with some paperwork and stuff. And they're like, here's the rates going to go up. And I was like, no, 
I am writing. We're getting this rate and this is what's happening. And I'm planning this and I'm like, ah, and like, don't <laughs> fuck with the rate. Okay. And then we got it and we locked it in. And literally two days later, the rates went up 4%. And I was like, mm-hmm. I just saved you so much money. Right there. Yep. We and watched sure. the market very closely. Oh my God. In the office. Do you have a little so- tipper? Yeah, we <laughs> a little abacus. No, uh, but we we do watch the market closely. We watch it daily, and uh, oh, yeah. we have a pretty good hold on when to lock and when not to. Um, good. Yeah, yeah, we have some very good tools for that. And I do too. Like I have to watch those rates too because I need to know. That's the number one question my clients ask me. It's like, what's the rate? How much is this loan going to cost me? And I have to have those numbers ready. And I am friends with so many mortgage loan officers on social media. If something happens, like my social media explodes. It's like, this is happening. It's this mortgage. And I'm like, damn, okay. And like all the mortgage loan officers are talking about it. And that's actually how I get my information is on social media and mortgage loan officers like yourself that are posting about what's going on. And so that's why social media is so, so important. And you know, I don't follow the Federal Reserve. I don't follow the unemployment rate. I follow amazing mortgage loan officers on social media and they update me on what's going on. Just FYI. And our social media will be in the comments below. So you should follow us because we have so much good information for you guys. And we're here to help you answer every question you have. Yes, we'll be making more videos like this in the future. So yeah, look out for those. So much fun. Are you having fun, Brooklyn? I am having fun. Are you having fun, Jen? I'm having so much fun. <laughs> oh my gosh. Do you like my, this is the game show on today, you win a house and we are your host. <laughs> it's such a dark. Okay. So if I have cash, should I still apply for a mortgage? If you have cash, all the better. Uh, cash down payments are popular. Of course, they need to be seasoned and sourced. And what, what I mean, mean by that, what? okay, yeah, it, it means you can't just use mattress money. Mattress money is a is a phrase we use in the industry. It's money you have in your mattress. <laughs> Metaphorically speaking, um, it's it's money that um, you you don't know where it came from. It's just straight dollar dollar bills. You cannot um, sell a hundred pounds of weed. <laughs> Take that cash, put it in the bank and buy a house. Actually, fun fact, you cannot use income from the weed industry to to buy a home in California. Isn't that crazy? Uh, I looked that up the other day and I was like, oh, that kind of income does not qualify. Um, So anyways, uh, it has to come from a valid source like a bank account uh, and it can't have been deposited into the account from cash, like the day before, um, I believe right. it needs to have at least a two month seasoning period. It does. And you have yes. to show like where it came from. Exactly. Right? Yeah. There um, has to be a trail. Now, ex- yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. There has to be a paper trail. Uh, now, would I recommend outright buying a home with cash and skipping the loan process? Probably not. Uh, it's a common misconception that it will help you in the long run. Uh, when really you can build more wealth by leveraging some of that cash uh, free and investing it elsewhere. We can help you with these financial investments by creating a financial strategy. Cool. Yeah. And people do need a financial strategy because like, so I went to the Bay Area and you went to the Bay Area. I know you did an open house in Redwood City. I went the same weekend. I did so. I went to some open houses in San Mateo and I'm like, what's the scoop in the Bay? you know, what's going on over here? Because, you know, we're both in Sacramento and the real estate agent over there was like, all cash, no contingencies. We give all the disclosures up front. And she's like, I have a client that has $2.5 million in their bank account and they want to get a loan. And in the Bay Area, it is, I mean, you think Sacramento's fears, the Bay Area is crazy. And she's like, you kind of have to buy all cash in the Bay area because that's a very, very nice offer. And there's so many, like that is a whole nother status of wealth and prosperity. And these people are like bazillionaires over there and they're buying million dollars. Like, 
every yeah, if you I can saw, afford to buy a, a home in San Francisco, home. you're probably rolling in it. <laughs> yeah, like you have to be rolling in it, right? Yeah. Because but like, I mean, the Bay Area in general, not so much. Inside of San Francisco, yes, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, especially certain districts, you know, like the Marina. Um, but if you're talking about the no, Bay no. Area in general, like Oakland is a bit more on the affordable side. Maybe not San Rafael. That's a, a very <laughs> competitive area as far as housing goes. Yeah, so it's like San Francisco is like, like I could put a pin there. Like you better have all cash because those guys are ready to play. They're on a whole, they're on the next level. And then as you're like making your trek to Sacramento, it gets a little (laughs) bit cheaper. (laughs) And that's why, (laughs) and like- Well, that's why people are moving out of the Bay Area. It's because it's so expensive there. And yeah, it's a lot more affordable up here with a lot of the same perks. You know, Sacramento is definitely an up and coming city. Um, I personally love it. You know, I live an hour away from it. I'll drive all the way there just to enjoy the, you know, the sights. It's beautiful. Yeah. So very comparable, in my opinion. And I feel like I need to do a video. I'm actually going to write this down of what is around Sacramento? Because everyone's like, okay, I was planning on doing that next weekend. Oh Let's my gosh. It. Okay. That's going to be our next Take video. Take you out. <laughs> because like I sold a house in Antelope and my dad is like, where the fuck is Antelope? <laughs> like what, what, where are you selling properties at? And it's like, it's in Sacramento. And he's like, what do you mean it's in Sacramento? And I was like, yeah. Okay. Hold <laughs> on here. Okay. So it's like San Francisco. Daily City, San Mateo. Yeah, you know. Sacramento area, Bay Area. So, yeah, so it's, we it's need close. to introduce people to the Sacramento area because yes. you live an hour outside of Sacramento. I live in South Sacramento. And I'm still technically Sacramento area. And yeah, we're still Sacramento. And we probably are like an hour away from each other because Sacramento, mm-hmm. it's a cow town. There's these little towns that are being built out and they're starting to connect. And I think that a lot of people... We need to introduce people to Sacramento. There's a lot of building over here. I've noticed there's a lot of like housing complexes that are going up. Um, You know, we have our main Galleria over here, but the fountains popped up like a handful of years ago. And that's brought even more shopping into our area. And and it's made it all around nicer and more classy. Oh, yeah. Because like the reason people wouldn't come out to Sacramento was, and what my mother told me when I moved to Sacramento is don't move to Sacramento. It's a ghetto and it's hot in the summer. It's not anymore. It's not ghetto anymore. I promise. I know. Do we look ghetto to you? Do we look ghetto to you? Or do we look like classy ladies here doing some business? And when women are doing business, that means that that is a thriving economy up and coming where women can come and do business and make money. Right? So no, Sacramento has it going on. It's probably the most underrated city. I agree. And we have a ton of millennials over here now. Like we've had Mm -hmm. so many millennials move move to Sacramento Mm -hmm. and they're really making it cooler. Yeah. We're like us. (laughs) We're And there's so many fun things to do in Sacramento. Like you could literally do a fun thing every day in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. If you, Mm -hmm. if you want to go out and mingle and if you have the energy to like (laughs) paint the town red, Sacramento's like, bring it on because we got everything for you. And like, that's how we met. Like we literally met at this beautiful place on the river and it was like wonderful. And there's boats going by and Brooklyn's like, I want to be on that boat. I, we need to be on a boat. And I'm like, we do need oh, to goodness. be on a boat. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, let's get on a boat. Like, <laughs> we, we were hiking. It was very fun though. Yes. And like, yeah, so we're we're looking for a boat to go on in Sacramento. <laughs> yeah, we had a great time. And we're going to be at the next one. Uh, there's a mix and mingle March 31st. So come out, say hi. We would love to talk to you. Okay, so when I buy a home, what credit score do I need? It depends. Uh, this is going to depend on the loan program that you end up going with. Um, okay. And there are a couple different factors involved. Okay. Um, of course, the higher, the better. Uh, we right. love people who sit solidly in the 700 range, um, but that's not always going to be the case. And it's mm-hmm. not necessary. 
Um, in some cases, we can go as low as 580 and still successfully 580? close on a, on a loan. Yes. Damn, how yeah. low can we go? How low can we go? So, yeah, it, it really depends on the loan program. Okay. And we can discuss it. I mean, um, me, if, if you're a client and you're coming to me and you have a low credit score, we can discuss options, cool. see what fits you best. But it also depends on other factors as well. So, so it's many not just the credit score, it's also mm-hmm. the stability of your income. It's, um, yep. Yeah. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. The better the credit score, the more money you have, the cheaper money is. That's it. I'm going to put it better myself. <laughs> That's it. Like, yeah, I'm just going to be real with you straight to the point. So get work on your credit. You deserve a good credit score people out there. You deserve to be financially stable. You deserve to have a really good job and you deserve a house and you deserve a really good rate. So I don't know who need to hear that, but, but we'll work with any situation and we'll everyone help you. Deserves, everyone deserves a home. Everyone deserves a home. Everyone deserves a home. And we're here to help with every situation and every situation is unique and every deal is different and everyone deserves a home and we're here to help you in any way that we can get you into a home. Yes. The another number one biggest question that I get is how much of a down payment do I need? Again, I will reiterate this is going to be dependent on the loan program that you want and okay. also your financial goals. Okay. Um, so putting down a down payment, um, like I discussed with you previously, it's a uh, it depends on if you need free cash on hand up front or not so much. And you want like maybe smaller um, monthly payments throughout the life of the loan. The bigger the down payment, the smaller the monthly payments and vice versa. So right. it just really depends on how much money you need now um, or not so much. And you just want that smaller monthly payment. Because everyone's like, do I need to put down 20%? Oh, well, um, the lowest I believe is going to be three and a half percent. Um, that's for maybe an FHA program, but also conventional loan programs will allow that as well. And a lot of Mm -hmm. people don't know that you don't have to put 20% down. It's not a necessity. Do you You guys hear that? You you don't have three and a half percent, um, down, and then you'll, you'll have to pay mortgage insurance. Um, but you only have to pay the mortgage insurance until your equity goes up to that 20% and then it's gone. Yeah. So pretty much the more money you put down, the cheaper the loan is. And you can buy down the rate too, which not not necessarily the cheaper the loan <laughs> is okay. the loan amount will still This is why be we talk same, about it. This is why we talk about it. But it'll the it'll be distributed differently. It will be distributed differently. Yes. Cool. Yeah. So yeah, you don't have to put down 20%. I have done multiple transactions with three and a half percent down because like, it makes it a lot more affordable for people. Come on. Yeah. 20%? And it, it really doesn't affect the monthly payment that much. Um, and I would say that maybe one of the biggest barriers is everyone's like, I don't have 20% down. Like you, you can still buy, <laughs> you can still buy a house. Yeah. yeah. And like, yeah. so it's, Three and a half percent, five percent, ten percent, fifteen percent, twenty percent. You know, it's there's a range here, and yeah, yeah. I've I've seen the entire range. So, again, whatever you feel comfortable with, right? Yes, right, right. Can I buy a home with my family? Of course you can. <laughs> no, um, <laughs> that's kind of the point, so, right? You buy a yeah, home for uh, your family course, to be with course. your family, right? Um, you don't have to be married to co-sign on a loan. You can be a parent and co-sign on your child's loan. Um, wow. Non-occupying co-borrowers are also allowed. So you don't have to live in the house either. So cool. if you're a first-time home buyer and you want your mom to co-sign on your loan, but she has her own house and she won't be moving in with you, it's totally allowed. Nice. That's, yeah. that's really important information. Yeah. Can I get a money gift from my family and use it in the process? Uh, yes, but uh, yes, but it depends. Different loan programs have different rules for this. Okay. Um, so it's not the same rule for all of the program. It's going to vary um, who it can come from. Like, okay. for example, you're a realtor. If you were yep. to um, 
try and give a gift money to your client, that's not allowed because you benefit from that. Right. Oh, but if well, I good. do give my clients a $500 credit on every transaction and I just take it out of my commission and they get it at the close of escrow. Hmm. Okay. So just well, come go. back. It, I don't think it's considered gift money though. It's not considered gift money. Yeah. It's a, it's So yeah, how yeah, I write it up it's, is, it's a little different. How I write it up is it's an addendum. So yeah. if you work with me there, I have an actual online coupon. You can see it on my Instagram and it's like, $500 for you towards any closed transaction when you work with I like that. Oh, yeah. Like my last client, I literally gave him a thousand dollars out of my commission. And wow, look at you go. That's, that's so sweet. And he, he's a client for life because money talks, bullshit walks. I'm a real estate agent. <laughs> I know how expensive, I know how expensive it is to buy a house and I know I make commission, right? I make two and a half percent on these commissions. And $500 is a home inspection. $500 is the appraisal. $500 is a bill. I literally pay one of your bills out of my commission to close the transaction because money talks, okay? I'm invested in this transaction as well. You know, I'm not just here to take the commission. I'm here to contribute something to you, to hold your hand, to make sure that you're, it's really a transition, a trans information for my clients because you go from one house to another your whole life changes you know what I mean and like I'm a part of your transformation and this is just a small thing that I can do to help make it a little bit better and why you should really buy a house with me because I take care of you and so does Brooklyn so yeah uh that's and I just do it in an addendum so it's addendum number or whatever and it says uh seller Seller to receive a $500 credit at the close of escrow from the selling agent. And then when you buy a house, it says buyer to receive a $500 credit mm -hmm. from the buying agent at the close of escrow. And then I have to yep. submit that. And then you'll see it in the net, the closing statement at the close of escrow that, hey, I'm giving you $500 in my commission. Yeah. So that's totally allowed. Um, when it's allowed. considered a money gift, um, it, it does depend on who it's coming from, how much it can be, um, what it can be applied towards. And it also, of course, has to be seasoned. In yeah, I was going like to say it has to be earlier. seasoned. So I've done yeah. transactions where <clears throat> mom will come in and put the down payment on the house for the kid. And yeah. when we talk to mortgage loan officers, we want to make sure that that's going to go through. And there's a little bit more paperwork that you have to do. But yeah. It happens and kids should support their parents. You should, you know, get your kids a down payment for a house. Like that is an amazing gift. And yeah, that is and like, we'll definitely let the clients know, like if, if it's allowed, then we'll put it through, you know, but mm -hmm. it depends on after we've decided on the loan program, mm -hmm. it, that's, that's what will decide how much it can be and what it can be applied towards, right. like down payments or, or whatever. And it is taxed. The yeah. gift is taxed. So just so you guys know, it is tax and we can help you with that as well. And so, you know, the tax rate and how to do it on your taxes and stuff. Cause that's, that was, the, that was the number one question on not my, on three transactions ago was, is this gift money going to be taxed? And I was like, I don't know, let's look it up. And they were really, really <laughs> concerned because they're like super type A, like I had a plus clients, you know, city job, blah, blah, blah. Mom is giving a gift. Like these clients had their shit together and it made it so easy to apply for a mortgage and buy a house. And they asked the number one question that I, no one even asked. And I was like, this is great because, you know, we have to make sure all the paperwork's good. I want to make sure the money's good. So that way there's no headaches later. Um, yeah. Ask your mortgage advisor. <laughs> yeah. Talk to Brooklyn. She will answer all your questions. Uh, how do I lock in my interest? So once you're in contract, we can lock in the interest as soon as you find a property. Uh, I, like I said earlier, I watch the market every day. I look out for trends that will affect your interest rate, um, but we cannot tell you exactly which way the rates will move. We can only forecast it. Um, studying the market like we do, we're able to help put, um, help you make an informed choice. I can tell you Whether right now, today the, or tomorrow. the rates are going up. So as soon as you get in contract, lock it. That would be my professional recommendation. 
and yeah, I mean, in in most cases, that is. But the market changes very every good day. Advice. Yeah, <laughs> but the market, the market changes, changes every day. So that's so this not is, always so going to be the case. Today, March 14th, 2022, that's what I recommend. When you guys work with us, we will update you on that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, okay, here is a really good question that you should be asking your real estate agents and mortgage loan officers is, why should I work with you? Great question, Jen. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's because I care. I awesome. want what's best for my clients, mm -hmm. truly. Even if that means waiting to buy a home, I'd rather do that than rush them into something that isn't in their best interest. Not only that, but my company has competitive rates and we work very well together um, to make the whole process easier for you. Uh, it shouldn't feel like work to you because it's not It's your not job. work. This it's is mine. <laughs> this is play to me. Like, show me the money. Let's go shopping. Let's buy your dream home. Like, yeah, I don't mind. It can work. be stressful, but it it doesn't have to be. And like, let's negotiate. You know, like when I would go to the home inspections, I have my home inspector that I use, and like I have really good relationships. I stay in the home and I like help them inspect the home. I'm like, oh, okay. Like, do you want me to hold something for you? And I. <laughs> know my clients' homes better than they know their homes. I know their roof. I know their attic. I know their walls. I know their foundation. I know their neighbors. I know their backyard. I know where their property lines are. I have OCD, and this is why you should hire me, because I look at everything. I will point out, to, I will do a pre-inspection before the home inspector comes, and I'll be like, you gotta check this, you gotta check this, and, he, and this mm -hmm. is why he loves working with me, because he's like, do you want to be a home inspector? I'm like, it sounds like you're good at it. <laughs> I am a home inspector and I will do a pre-inspection. I have my, um, I don't know if you see on my keychain, it's like a self-defense tool to break like windows and like to stab people. And I use it as my termite inspector. And I'm like doing my termite tests and I'm like poking the house and I'm like, you got roof, you got damage here. This passes the test. And I do these because I'm crazy and I have OCD and that's why you should work with me because I will give you a, a semi-inspection report just going to the house. And then Brooklyn up here will make sure the money's good. And this is why we're a great team. This is why we're a great team. And this is why you should work with us because we care. And I'm a little crazy. And she's really, <laughs> really smart. And together, Thank we're, you. The team. we're the team. And yeah. we're just really fun. We're just really fun people. So can you recommend a good realtor to your clients? I know multiple realtors, uh -huh. but I have a really strong relationship with you because we work so Woo! well together. So oh I got to recommend you. <laughs> you should, you should recommend me. Yeah. Uh, I have been in the real estate game now since August 2020. So this August, I'll be coming up on two years. Before I was a real estate agent, I would speak at the real estate round table, which was, I because I wanted to be a real estate investor. I was like, I don't want to be a real estate agent. I want to be a real estate investor. And then I was like, how am I going to get the money to invest? And then I was like, well, I knew so much. I would like go to the events. I would set them up. I would talk to everybody. I would interview um really successful investors. I would interview appraisers. Like I'm an interviewer. Like I'm interviewing you. I know how to interview. I love it. Like I would literally just apply to jobs just to interview, get the jobs and like not take them because I love interviewing so much. Anyways, I'm crazy, but I know how to get information from people. And I had so much information and someone was like, maybe you should get your real estate license. And I was like, yeah, okay. Like I'll save on commission. So I, I got my real estate license to save on commissions for my own deals for me. I'm like my, my own buyer and uh, just building my business. So that way I can be my own real estate agent. And there's my mortgage loan officer that I'm interviewing for my properties. And I would definitely say when you build your wealth, when you have the money in the bank and when you're ready to buy a house, I would recommend getting a mortgage, even if you have cash in the bank, 
Because look at, let's do the numbers here. It's simple math. You want to buy a $100,000 house, just saying, just to make it really simple. You have $100,000 in the bank, okay? I could spend my $100,000 and buy that house and I have that house free and clear. But then I only have one house. Or I could talk to my friend Brooklyn and be like, hey, Brooklyn, I got $100,000. I got 800 credit score. I wanna buy this $100,000 house, give me a loan. And I could put 20% down, okay? So I could put $20,000 down and I could get that house. Now I have $80,000 to go buy more houses and build or my you have that money free to invest however else you want and then your loan gets paid off over time but you're also still earning money on your job or whatever and then you can sell that home for more than you bought it and you have more wealth than you did before right so brooklyn is here <clears throat> to help us build our wealth and grow our money and to create more opportunities building okay, and, wealth and, and growing if, money. If you buy a home outright, all of that money is tied up in the brick and mortar. Right. It's not free. You can't pull it out. I mean, unless you do like a HELOC or something, but you, but can the HELOC, part, yep. you, you can't, you can't use that money. It's in the house. So right. if you have a loan, that money is free for you to invest elsewhere. Um, that's maybe a little more liquid. And, uh, and so that's also something to consider. Um, as a positive towards the loan. Right. And so loans are just to help you expand your wealth and your money. So exactly the people, the people that nutshell. just want to, you know, buy cash. Yes, you can do that. But we also want you to consider expanding and having more opportunities for more income streams or more homes for your family and stuff. So I just wanted to like throw that out there. Yeah. So what's your Instagram? I'll put it all down in the comments below. Cool. Um, <laughs> if I say it out loud, they'll probably not remember. Clicking on the link is easier. So we'll just put it in the bottom. My Instagram is at Jen Atherton with two N's. J-E-N-N-A-T-H-E-R-T-O-N. Are we Facebook friends? Uh, we will be. We will be. I don't know if we are. <laughs> okay. But we will be today. Yeah. Um, do you have any questions for me, Brooklyn? I think we'll save that for the next video, but uh, thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. So our next video is going to be, um, maybe we'll pull up a map of Sacramento mm -hmm. uh, and we'll do a, sh a screen share and we'll tell people Sacramento and all of the surrounding cities. Sure, sure. Like Antelope. Yeah, we could explain the map out. Like Lincoln, like... Um, there's so many like little vineyard, uh, you know, like every little turf has its own little name. And we would oh, yeah. love to give you guys a tour of Sacramento and the surrounding areas next. So you Perfect. are knowledgeable about what we're talking about because there's, we'll show you the little hidden gems and why <laughs> Sacramento is underrated and why it's a great place to buy a home with us. Sounds good. Thank Sounds you so good. much, Jen. Thank you. This was so much fun. I'd love to do it again. Okay, let's do it again. All right. All Thank right. you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.